Mirror descent is an interesting extension of gradient descent approach. With mirror descent algorithm, we can consider non-Euclidean space. Okay? So all the previous results based on Euclidean distance. Every norm is actually two norm. L2 norm. So when we have vector V, then we basically compute the square root of sum of square of element. when V belong to the dimensional space. And, but in some cases, this Euclidean distance is not efficient concept. Okay? So it might be useful to uh, use another geometry, another distance metric. So the conversion speed when F is ellipsis, ellipsis continuous with respect to other um, distance norm, other distance metric, is also a very interesting question. If function f is continuous or um, continuous and differentiable, and it has a very um, smooth with respect to another distance metric, how can how much we can guarantee for that kind of scenario? That is a very interesting question. So to understand non-Euclidean uh, space, let's consider some dual space and dual norm. So the dual space definition, I rewrite just I just rewrite the definition in Wikipedia. So any vector space V has a corresponding dual vector space V star consisting of all linear functionals on V to get, together with the vector space structure of pointwise addition and scalar multiplication by constant. So this is um, the exact definition of dual space. So to understand the dual space precisely, you have to understand what is linear functionals and what is vector, fun vector space and what is norm space and so on. So this is a little bit a uh, very long story uh, to cover entire story. In this class, I have to spend a uh, few weeks but I don't have enough time for this class so I will um, read this part for um, self-study but I, I, I will do not um, include this part for midterm and final exam okay anyway so I, I will try to do my best to explain what is a dual norm and what is proxima, what is mirror gradient descent approach without um, very difficult concept in dual space. Okay, so what is dual norm? Indeed, there are many different norms on real number n dimensional space. One very famous uh, norm is um, L norm. L norm is defined like this. The sum of sorry sum of elements part L like this and then you apply one over L power. Okay? And when L is equal to 2, then this is Euclidean. Okay. And dual norm is um, defined for each norm like this. So supimum of G transpose X, so dual norm of G means the supimum of G transpose X and the supimum over whole um, input X of which known value is less than or equal to 1. So the dual norm is defined for linear function. Linear functional. Linear functional. 
what is linear functional? Linear functional is um, is um, element that define a linear function. So here, g vector define a linear function of x. So here, the norm of g very depend on the definition of norm of x because we are taking supimum so supimum is, is max indeed supimum operator over the unit ball and unit ball defined for this particular norm of input space x okay when l is 2 and l norm you consider then the dual norm is also 2 norm l2 norm if you consider another um, norm like a p norm then the dual norm is not p norm no only true when l is equal to 2 in general, in general the dual norm having different q and satisfy 1 over p plus 1 over q is equal to 1 that is dual norm okay that is definition of dual norm and but please note that there are another many different norms in l and space l norm is just one category of norm okay so with this dual norm you can define Lipschitz continuity and smoothness so Lipschitz continuity is the case your function f having gradient of which dual norm is always less than or equal to L. The smoothness also defined with dual norm. Smoothness, if your function f is beta smooth, then your gradient of fx and gradient of fy, the difference of having less than or equal to beta times x minus y input norm. Okay, so you can define new Lipschitz continuous concept and smoothness concept using dual norm. Bregman divergence is also a very important concept to understand mirror descent approach. So the definition of Bregman divergence is this. The Bregman divergence defined with a function f, with any function f essentially. Uh, so essentially what is Bregman divergence, this is equal to fx minus fy minus gradient of fy transpose x minus y. So this is basically a convex function. So this Bregman divergence measure the distance or the gap between the tangent line at point y and your function value at point x. Because your function f is convex function and strongly convex function, there are always some gap. And this gap indicates how far from the value y. So that's why it is called divergence. But why this is not distance? So usually distance is this. When you measure a distance between point x and y, you have uh, you just measure the norm, define your current space with the x minus y vector. Okay, so this is usual defi usual definition of distance, and the distance having this property, you can exchange the the lo location of x and y, but di divergence is different. If you change x and y position, it 
There are many cases this does not hold. That's why we cannot say this is pragma distance. No distance. This is divergence because of this. And for Bregman divergence, we have um, this useful identity property, and which comes from the definition of Bregman divergence. You can easily check this equality from the definition of Bregman divergence. Okay, let's define mirror map. So let's consider an optimization problem with um, convex open set D and uh, closure of the open set D and you have um, convex constraint closed set X we say the pi function is a mirror map if um, pi is strictly convex and differentiable and the gradient of pi take all possible values and the gradient of pi diverge on the boundary of D. Okay? Gradient is very nice operator that can map original space point to the dual space. So every xt value in the original space can move to the dual space using gradient operator using the mirror map. Okay, so we consider the corresponding point in dual space that is gradient of pi function at point xt. And then we compute the gradient descent in the dual space, not the original space. So very interestingly, we first compute the corresponding point in dual space and then compute the gradient descent okay and then we move back to the original space this is yt plus 1 so the corresponding point is gradient of pi at yt plus 1 and why I use yt plus 1 notation instead of xt plus 1 because in constraint uh, convex optimization problem, the yt plus 1 can be outside of the constraint set and in that case we need to learn projection. So that, that is the definition of projection and very interestingly for this projection we do not use the Euclidean norm but we use the Bregman divergence with function pi. Okay, so that is the mirror descent approach definition. And we can rewrite the mirror descent approach using this um, argument operator. That is the fourth step of the mirror descent approach. And from the definition of d pi x y t plus 1, and we are finding the argument. So we can add and subtract any constant which is independent to the um, x point. So we can uh, rewrite the first equation to the second equation from the definition of the Bregman divergence. And again, uh, we can add, um, you know, we can use the, the definition of gradient of pi yt plus 1, that is this. And from the definition of Bregman divergence, we can replace this equation by this. Okay, so when you look at this representation, this is very interesting form. So basically, from this, we can say this, xt plus 1 is argmin x in the constraint set f x t plus gradient of f x t transpose x minus x t plus 1 over gamma Bregman divergence 
x x t. Okay, so essentially, um, we just replace the Euclidean distance one over two gamma x minus x t norm square by this uh, Bregman divergence. Okay. So from the uh, vanilla, the original version of uh, gradient descent, we just replace this part by this, and then we have a mirror descent point. Okay. And uh, this replacement means we are interested in the distance uh, defined with uh, Bregman divergence, and we are not interested in the distance defined with um, Euclidean distance we usually use for gradient descent approach.